and I school and go home to ask my dad for my school fees. So I used to think, am I, am I that bad a child? <laughs> These, the, you know, when they attended school, they would have what we call midterm. When they had a little break in the midst of the school term. And whilst they were on break, I was still going to school. The worst of it all, this school that I attended, you had, we had, um, we had two shifts. <laughs> you start at a shift, 7 o'clock, and you finish at 12.30, that's your schooling done for the day. And then for a week or two, you do that. And then the following uh, week, you come again, you start your shift at uh, 1. You don't know. I couldn't really understand why my father did that. But when I look at my life now, the greatest asset besides God is my wife. Amen. It was at this school that I met this this beautiful lady. Children, and you know that yet she can she has produced the goods. <laughs> so, in the midst of your challenges and your difficulties, one thing that you have to understand is that it is part of the journey of life that God purposed for you to go through. The Bible says that. Saul went in search for donkeys for his father. You could imagine what, what would have been going on in the house. The Bible didn't say how many donkeys were missing. But if today you lose something as well as a actually a donkey was 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 a very prized asset at the time. Because you found with the donkeys, they provided vehicle for you. So a donkey could, let's say, uh, have the same value as a car. Yeah. And if you lose a few, you lose a few donkeys. I don't know what would be going on in that house. Well, whichever servant left the gates or whatever or not, or the, I don't know what they would be going. But to lose a few donkeys and um, for for the man to to decide to complain and remember and bring the whole house down and fire and sack and you know, come on, he could have done anything. There will be trouble in the house. I will investigate and find out who left the front door open for the thieves to come in and get access to the keys. And I make sure that I scold that person. But they just send people out to go and look for the donkeys. I think it's a casual thing. But it's a, it's a vulnerable thing. Now, in the midst of trying to find the donkeys, a son who is loyal to his father was anointed a king. Calamity, misfortune, mishap. Something that none of us want to experience or go through. But in the midst of it, God proves himself in that family. And the young man comes home, not just, not, not with the donkeys, because the Bible says, Prophet Samuel. The donkeys that you're looking for, they have been found. But he walks home with the crown of a king. The whole household is transformed and is changed because of the misfortune and the calamity. Last two weeks, we looked at Paul and Silas being imprisoned. And by the time that they had every reason to murmur and complain, your word. I've done nothing wrong and it exposed me, got me beaten in the town and got me in prison as well. And not just that, the Bible says, a 
among the prisoners, they were in prison under lock, but they had been chained. So in the prison, their movement was even restricted. Tell me that they have no reason to complain and murmur and bicker and be bitter about this God who sent them. Tell me. Then the Bible says, at midnight, I don't know how these people managed to find that, I mean, I've been through some things in my life and in my walk with God. But to be honest, I'm not in meeting at a current time center. <laughs> and I'm not being strict naked. I don't know what it means to be in a prison. Nowadays, the prisons are, I mean, some people just want to go to the prisons because, you know, they're, they're, they're man. The prison cell with the flat, flat screen, you know, LCD. You know, not only the LCD or cattle break tubes, you know, LEDs. You have a reason to complain, but it is dangerous to complain and to murmur. Because complaints and murmurs, the last time I checked, have not done anything for anyone. We have in this country a serious crisis and you hear the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, even within the Conservative, Conservative, Conservative Party that are actually ruling government right now. Even within the party there's bickering and there's complaints and there's memory. And we don't like the deal that the Prime Minister got from uh, 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 Brussels. We don't like this. There is this and that and that. And then I hear the journalists ask them, so what is a good deal then? And then they're like, oh, but we, you know, we, we have to take the vote back to the people to, 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 to do the referendum, so that we have another referendum, so that so, but the people already voted and said we want to leave. So if the Prime Minister is not doing a good job, and he's not going to tell us what, your, your, what you think would be the appropriate deal for you. Actually, if they come together and say, look, this is about the pensions, the investment, the properties, it's about jobs, it's about families, it's about the NHS. Let's see how we can put our, our partisan differences aside and try and get something concrete and comprehensive and, you know, a, a, a debate and try and get, they, they could have had something better. But they mock at the Prime Minister and they have no better alternative. Murmuring and bickering and complaints, the last time I checked, has never brought any solution to any problem. But I'll show you in the scriptures, it is not just Paul and Silas, that some of the battles you are fighting would actually take worship and praise to overcome and to win those battles. Now the Bible says, it happened after this, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat was the king of the people of God at the time. He said, it's happened after that the people of Moab, then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. You see, when the Bible says a great multitude, you might just be thinking, oh, you know, uh, 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 we're talking about just, you know, you know, army and people. But in your life, sometimes the things that you're going through can be classified as a great multitude. The letters are coming for the bills, water bill. Gas bill, electricity bills are coming. Council tax. Council tax is coming. The credit cards are coming. The, the car insurance is coming. On top of that, about three or four parking tickets. TV license is coming. And uh, when you look at that, the season is coming where your children need winter jackets. Can't afford to bring 
them to, to, to church and to go to school with their winter jackets around there like that, you know, walking like that. It's time to buy them winter jackets. You're looking at it and their school uniforms, you know, are torn. If you're like my son in the, in the, in the calendar in the school mantle, you need to change about four shoes. We bought them from class. The boy goes to school, I don't know. We play, you know, this game called Chasquele where you, you get milk teams and um, what you call it, uh, you know, milk team, use cans, and then you hit them with stones. So they become small. And then, you know, you be, you be hitting them like, you play sort of cricket. But, but so sometimes we keep them, those teams with our shoes. But we were doing those, but our shoes weren't changed every, every, every you know, every turn. You know, you wear the shoes every year, and sometimes they buy the shoes two sizes up. <laughs> you know each other. So you step in the front of the shoes, and you're wearing it for three years. Yes. And it was something called Bronco. Yes. You know, when the shoe is black and it changes, it changes, it starts to fade. You change the shoe from black to white to Bronco. <laughs> All you need in the morning is to get your socks there, and your white socks, and your Bronco shoes, and you're going to school. Three years on a row. I don't know what this guy, this guy does with the shoes. The shoes are all torn and they said, okay, maybe we're not buying expensive shoes. Let's nice buy kickers. Oh, the kickers, 60 pounds, 80 pounds. And, you know, before the, the half term, the shoes are gone. So that, that is also on the, on the bill, you know. And on top of that, the phone calls are coming from left, right, center, forward. Your mommy is ill, your daddy is ill, something has to go home. I mean, when you look at all these things, it's like a multitude of things being thrown at you at once. Man, it's like you're fighting a swarm of bees, multitude. Let's go on to the next verse. Saint Joshua, fear. It's okay to be afraid sometimes. Sometimes we are in the valleys. There are times when we are on the mountains. But David says, No, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. You can go through the valley, but in the valley, know that there is a God that you can call on. Don't make your bed in the valley. Don't make your abode in the valley. Don't sleep in the valley. Like Jehoshaphat, set yourself to seek the Lord. So then he set himself to seek the Lord. And he did what? He proclaimed a fast through all of Judah. In the midst of the multitude of problems and situations, fasting and prayer helps. Amen. But you find out fasting and prayer will not bend the hand of God. But fasting and prayer would help you to hear the voice of God. Say, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Nice words. He said, then Joshua stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. Next verse. And said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? That is the power of declaration. You see, one of the things that we have come to learn as a church is declaration. 